Hi everyone, it's Michelle here. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this card with these fun rainbow bird houses that you see here. And I'll have a lot of tips along the way, so let's get started. So I pulled out two stamp sets from the alleyway stamps. Um, the one on the right here is called Moose and You, and the one on the left is called Branching Out. And I'm just pointing to the two bird houses that I pulled off right here. So I've already taken these stamps out and I've mounted them onto my acrylic block on opposite sides, which I'm just showing you here. And this makes it really easy for me to just switch back and forth and you may have seen me do this in other videos. I just find it's really helpful and kind of saves a lot of time so you don't have to um, unmount your stamps and then mount them back on. So I pulled out this black hybrid ink from my favorite things, which is a Copic friendly ink. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of randomly stamp these birdhouses. It's a little bit random, but I also kind of have in mind uh, the sentiment I'm going to put on the bottom, which is going to be a thanks sentiment. So I'm kind of keeping in mind where the letters go, and you'll see what I mean later on when I bring out um, the die cut that I have already set. So I'm just switching back and forth between these birdhouses, as you can see here, and just varying the length that they're going to be hanging from the top and again I'm leaving about half of the card empty on the bottom um, to leave space for the sentiment later. So I was going to put seven initially because I like to do things in odd numbers but I ended up only having enough room for six but I think it worked out okay anyway. So I'm just gonna stick with these six birdhouses and clean off my stamps and then we'll go into coloring. So I pulled out my Copic markers, which you can see here. This is my very small and humble collection, but I have recently expanded to have um, some markers in every color family. So that's why I thought it would be fun to just go with a rainbow theme today. So I get to use a little bit of every single color. So I'm just going in a typical rainbow order, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Those are the colors I'm using for my six bird houses. So in the beginning, I started off with the typical Copic technique, which is you start with light, then go to medium and dark, and then blend that back out with medium and light. But I actually took a shortcut later on, and you can see what I'm doing here is I'm just putting down the darker color and then blending that out with the medium or lighter colors. And this just saves a little bit of time, so you don't have to go back and forth. Um, and this is really great since these are small images anyway, so it ends up working okay and if you went back and forth it wouldn't make that much of a difference anyway. And I also wanted to slow down just a little bit for this blue birdhouse here. Um, so I actually only have two markers that are kind of far apart for um, my blue color. So you can see here that the light and dark colors are really far apart so I'm just showing you here how I touch the tip of my lighter marker to the tip of my darker marker and this kind of creates a medium shade and it ends up blending the light and dark colors really well even though initially they were very far apart. So this is just a little trick in case you don't have the exact right colors, um, but you have two kind of different colors and you want to find a way to blend them together. This is a great technique to use with Copic markers and it does not damage your markers at all. And this is just a great way that I've um, found to stretch my markers since I don't have a very big collection. Um, for the insides of these birdhouses, I just did a really quick light and dark gray. And then I'm also using my colorless blender to push some ink back um, in this blue birdhouse because it uh, seeped out a little bit out of the outline. And now I'm just showing you here real quick, I pulled out my thanks die cut that I had already um, set aside and cut, and I just wanted to show you how it fits there, but we're going to deal with that more later on. So now I want to make the strings for these birdhouses so it looks like they're hanging from the top of the card. So I just took an old mouse pad and a thumbtack. If you have a special paper piercing tool um, and a mat to do this, you can go ahead and use that. But this is also a really easy way to use things that you probably already have. And I pulled out all of these colorful twines that I have. I got these spools in a value pack um, from American Crafts. So there are a bunch of different colors and... Um, I have one matching each birdhouse that I have colored out and I thought this would be a really fun way to take this rainbow theme further. At first I was just going to use regular twine but I figured I might as well use these since I had them. So each of these I've cut a, a short length of and I'm going to 
thread it through that small hole that I've pierced with my thumbtack and I'm just taping the ends of the string on the back with some painter's tape. You can also use washi tape or even scotch tape, just whatever you have to hold it in place since it's on the back and no one will see it. So sometimes it's a little hard to um, get the, the twine through since it's a little thick. But if you just kind of like twirl the edges and if you need to, you can also like make the holes bigger with your piercing tool. Um, and this wasn't too hard to do. And if you don't have these colored twines, you can also use embroidery floss um, or maybe some thin yarn or even baker's twine. And if you don't have a bunch of colors um, of string or twine to match these birdhouses, I've actually seen people color in white um, string or thread with Copic markers. So that could actually be perfect for this because you can match the colors that you color in your birdhouses with with your twine. Um, so that's another idea. And if you've watched my videos before, you know that these little fuzzy things on the twine drives me crazy. So I'm just trimming off some of those here. I'm trying to get as much, many of the big pieces off as I can. So now we're going to deal with this um, Thanks die cut. I cut this out of my silhouette, but you could also use your manual die cut machine, of course, um, whatever you have. And I just cut this out of white cardstock. So to make it stand out, I'm going to be embossing this entire die cut. So I just put it on a strip of painter's tape to make it easier to deal with when I'm heat setting this. And I'm using um, liquid platinum silver embossing powder from Ranger, which is my favorite silver embossing powder. And I'm just pouring that over the die cut, which I have um, inked up with Versamark. And some of this gets on the painter's tape, but it's not that big a deal because if you've used embossing powder, you know that um, that little bit that sticks to it really will not matter because it, um, the embossing powder lasts so long anyway. And you can see here how I have this die cut on this tape and it makes it a lot easier to deal with when I heat set it. Which you can see I've done here, it's all shiny and melted now. And now I'm going to show you what it looks like on my card. And you can see exactly what I meant about kind of keeping in mind where the asunders in my um, letters were. Um, that's how I figured out where to put the high birdhouses and the low birdhouses and it ended up working out perfectly that this die cut um, looks like it fits perfectly in that space. And when I was doing that earlier, I honestly was just eyeballing it, but if you want to have more of a guide, you can always put your die cut down while you're stamping to make sure you get it in all the right spaces. So to adhere this to my card front, um, since this is a pretty um, delicate die cut. I can't really use tape runner with this. I pulled out my liquid adhesive and I'm just going all in and just sticking my finger right into that pot there because I just think it's a lot easier to deal with this way. And I'm just smudging the glue on the back of this die cut so that it gets into all of the little areas to get it stuck down well. So now that all of that is adhered, I'm going to um, attach this card front to a card base. So I started off with a piece that was slightly smaller than a four and a quarter by five and a half. So now it can fit perfectly on a standard size card base with a little area around the edges. And I just popped this up on foam squares. As a final touch, I pulled out these silver embossed hearts that I already had. Um, I made these in a very similar way um, to the die cut where I just covered a whole sheet of white cardstock with Versamark ink and then used the same silver embossing powder, the liquid platinum. And I just embossed that entire sheet so that it was just kind of like a sheet of silver. And then I went ahead and die cut a bunch of little hearts on my silhouette out of that heat embossed sheet. So it's the same exact embossing powder so it matches perfectly with the sentiment that I used. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the same liquid adhesive that I used earlier to stick these down on either side of my sentiment and that will finish off my card. Here are some close-up photos of the finished card. I really like how this card came out with the fun rainbow birdhouses and that silver die cut. And I really hope you guys enjoyed watching it and learned some tips along the way. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the Alleyway Stamps and also my YouTube channel. You can just click the buttons right up there. And I also have on screen some links to past videos that I've created for the Alleyway Stamps. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.